Hello everybody! I hope you've been enjoying World Blender Meetup Day so far. My name is Zuri, and we're going to take a look at how to work smarter with modifiers to prototype models. This is a character I've been working on for a little first-person shooter game, so primarily the arms were a big focus here. The rest of him is in still kind of a prototyped stage, and I'm going to show you some of the techniques that I used to keep this stuff as dynamic as possible to keep things like bevel thicknesses even and uh, just have an easier time prototyping such that we're working with the tool, not against the tool, and not having to do work that a computer is better at than we are. So for instance, let's take a look at the helmet here. You can see that I've got a very even thickness around the helmet, and I've got even bevels around most of the pieces. So if we look at the arms, uh, these bevels that are going on all over the character are pretty consistent. On the gun, we've got repeating pieces of geometry, like these barrels that are uh, in a set of three, and they're basically the same on all three sides. We've got other pieces that are really simplified shapes like this drum for the gun and repeated patterns in the fingers, things like that. So we're going to take a look at how to make some of these things in practical ways that doesn't cost you a lot of effort and grief and can actually be a lot of fun. So this version of the model is pretty close to done. So let's hop over to my version of this guy that was still in the early prototyping phases and we'll see some of the techniques I used to do that. So there he is in a much earlier state. We can see that some of his proportions and other aspects of him changed a bit, but it's a prototype that's bound to happen. And we want that those changes to be as easy to make as possible. And we'll see as we learn how I constructed each of these pieces, how easy it is to modify something like bevel thickness or how thick his glove is or things like that. So before we dive into any one of those smaller details, let's start with kind of the first stage that you would do for blocking out a model like this, um, which is to kind of make a base mesh. Now, you could do this with sculpting, uh, but another way is to start with modifiers. And there are two kind of fun methods that I want to show. So the first one is going to be with the skin modifier. So let's try constructing this arm using just the skin modifier. If we hit Shift A, add in a basic plane. I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to just, um, I'm going to actually just delete all the vertices there. And then if we just hold control and click with, with nothing selected, control click will actually place a single vert. And then I'm going to just kind of grab and move. I'm not going to try to put it inside of this arm just because I already did that arm. And we'll put that right about there. And if I extrude this outwards to like there, that looks good. And we'll extrude one more time from the elbow. Okay, so that's going to form the upper arm. That'll be the elbow. And then this is really easy and cool. If we tab back out for a moment, go to the modifier tab and add modifier, skin modifier. This will take those verts and actually turn it into uh, some thickened geometry there, which is pretty cool. And then if we add a subdivision surface modifier on top of this, so we can do add modifier subdivision surface, or you can press control two for the hotkey for that, which is nice. Then that will uh, add some smoothness to it. And if we tab back into edit mode, uh, we should be able to still see our verts here. Um, now I've ended up with my kind of root right there. So I'm just gonna grab these and flip it around because the, um, the skin modifier wants a particular piece to be the root. Uh, and then I will move that over here and let's start making a, a hand. So if we just take this piece and extrude down, doesn't look like much of a hand. I'm going to turn on my um, x-ray mode, which uh, you can click right up here, or if you've turned on extra pie shading menus, that's on there. And we can kind of bring this in and I'm just gonna extrude one by one my fingers. Okay, and they don't look like much yet, but we've got each of those, and I'm gonna come back out here and do that. Now, it looks a little bit funky if I turn back off X-Ray. Yeah, that looks kind of funky and like not really usable, so we need to adjust the thickness. Now, when you're using the skin modifier, we do have a special uh, um, feature of every vertex, which is the thickness. And if I turn X-Ray back on for a moment, I'm gonna just grab each of these. I'm gonna hit C for my circle select and paint over those, and uh, grab that one as well. If we control A, it's kind of a weird hotkey, but control A will actually let us scale the skin modifier thickness. Okay, and I'll just bring that down a bit. Okay, kind of 
jump, jumping around all over there. Okay, and then we'll grab all of those, extrude again, and we've got some funky looking fingers. Yay! I love funky fingers. Okay, and then uh, if I grab all of these, I can control A again, and I can just kind of scale them up to where I'm a little happier with the way that they look. Okay, this is really fun for creature design in particular. Um, human hands, maybe there's better ways, but I'm just kind of spitballing here with this. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I used a combination of sculpt mode and skin modifier just to get started. It's great for making your base meshes. And then I'll make, um, Oh, we'll do an extrovert in there. I'll do Control R to insert an edge loop, GG to start sliding that edge, and Control A to skinny that down. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay, and we're getting a little bit of an artifact over here, so I'm just going to kind of wiggle that until it doesn't explode anymore. Okay. And yeah, and then this arm was really thick, so we're just going to scale that one up. I'm going to do another uh, vertex right there, so Control r to insert a edge loop, GG to slide, Control a to scale that up, and eh, Control a maybe down a little bit. If I just bring that really close, eh, something like that. Okay, and we're not worried about final results here, right? We're not, we're not concerned with is this topology any good or anything like that. It's just a great prototyping tool. Okay, and we'll do one more right up there. Okay, and if we turn off x-ray mode, we can see that really quickly I've got a hand, although those fingers are a little weird, but uh, you know, you can play with that until this hand is actually somewhat usable, at the very least as a base mesh, and then you can go in there and you can sculpt all of your details. So that's a great way to get started with that. Uh, before the skin modifier, that would have taken considerably longer. And the nice thing is that it does actually pretty good all quad geometry. The junctions get a little bit weird in through the fingers, but you know we're not terribly worried about that at this stage. It's all prototypes. Okay, so that's one way to get started uh, using the skin modifier. Another fun one, um, I don't have a really practical example of how I used it here, but another fun alternative to the skin modifier is the uh, metaballs. Uh, metaballs are a different type of object that I think everybody kind of hears about in passing and then forgets to actually play with. They're really fun. Um, so if we hit Shift A, instead of under the mesh, we can go down to metaball. And we have a whole bunch of types down here. Ball is kind of the default. Now these are volume based, so they, they do not inherently have a predetermined number of polygons that belong to them. So we can grab this around here and we really don't even have to think about what's the geometry for this. We're just thinking what is the shape? And so if I duplicate this, this is where they get really cool. So shift D to duplicate. And now as I drag this away, we end up real time getting these cool morphy gooey things. Um, I don't Like I said, I don't remember actually using them when prototyping this, but they're great for organic forms. You could even do fingers this way. If I do Shift A and add uh, an alternative type, it doesn't have to be a ball. We could try a capsule. So maybe that's going to be good for fingers. We could scale out like that, bring that up in here. And this will do a little bit better of a job than the skin modifier when it comes to multiple points jutting out of the same position. Right, so something like that. And when we get too close, like that, we, we notice that the webbing starts to join in here because the volumes have gotten too close to each other. So we can just go over to the settings for our meta ball, which should be the green tab over here. And we should have the uh, resolution viewport. And we can actually, if we lower that, that's the, um, yeah, the, the smaller that is, the smaller the uh, generated polygons will be. So we can actually get pretty fine results. All right, it's going to be not a great mesh. It's not going to be as clean as our skin modifier with an all quad kind of setup, but it is still a great tool for prototyping um, sausage fingers, apparently. Um, so yeah, have some fun with that. And yeah, let's give him a thumb. Okay, now the important thing is when you're done with these, uh, how do we actually continue on to the next stages? So we can actually grab all of these metaballs and we can do a convert and they change the hotkeys ever since 2.8 so I always just search for it. So I hit F3 and just type convert and we can do convert to 
and pick from the list mesh. And that will convert that into a mesh. And now when we tab in, we have polygon data just like any other uh, sculpted model or anything else like that. And we could use the remesh uh, tools or anything like that to make this a, a better base for sculpting with. Um, yeah, it looks more like a weird octopus creature than a hand, but uh, yeah, you know, or, or like a medical glove that somebody blew up. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I'm actually pretty happy with how this arm turned out. That would be a great place to start on sculpting. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of it for that first stage, how to block things out. You can, of course, use uh, more traditional things, like on his legs here, I actually just used cubes. So a cube, control two for that subdivision surface. And then if I tab in, scale that up, maybe put in a few edge loops there. Um, you know, now we have a capsule that I can use as his leg. And that's, that's all that is. It doesn't look great. It's not usable in a final result, but in, what was that, 10 seconds? Uh, I know what his thigh might look like. So that's pretty cool. Next, let's talk about uh, some of the techniques that I used to go in and do some of the detailing on here. So I like to work on details that help me visualize what the final result is going to be. Um, even though they might not necessarily be final, like the shape of this armor plating is a little bit... Uh, basic. Uh, it is certainly better than looking at like that, right? It's This is obviously just a capsule, but if we keep our um, little armor plating there, we get a little bit better of a visualization. Plus, the way that I've set this up, and this is why I'm sharing this with you, is that if I wanted to adjust the position of this, I could just grab this and move this around, and it'll actually kind of move around, and I could try it out. What does it look like in that spot? What's it look like... Um, over here, oh, <laughs> maybe not that far, I'm kind of pushing it past its limits, but we can, um, if I tab into edit mode and I grab this little section here, we can kind of move that around and try out lots of cool little things. And this is super easy to set up and is one of the many techniques that I wanted to share. So let's, let's learn how I did that. It's simple enough. We can, uh, we'll, let, let's do it over here with um, this little fake leg that I've got. Um, or actually, let's let's do it with the arm. So if we come over, I'm going to set my skin modifier to use smooth shading, so we've got a little bit nicer of a thing to look at, and we don't need our medical glove anymore. Bye. Um, and we don't need that. Okay, so to set this up, it's really simple. Yet again, we're going to shift A, add a plane. And the plane is just a starting point. Tab in. I'm going to grab this, move it over here, rotate that guy. If you double tap R, you get to do this nice barrel roll kind of thing, track ball roll. And we're just going to move that guy over here, get it kind of close. And then we're going to turn on our snap settings. So up here at the top, we'll turn on um, snapping and turn it to face, closest, project individual elements and make sure that we're affecting move, rotate, and scale. Now that all of those are on, uh, and then when we scale this up or down, we should be snapping around. And this is very similar to the retopology phase of modeling, so many of you are probably familiar with that. Uh, and once we've got a little bit of a patch to work with, I'm going to tab out, and then we're going to add a solidify modifier. So we'll do solidify. And if I adjust the thickness here, uh, pull that negative in this case, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to hit W, Shade Smooth. If you're using left-click select, that would be on the right-click context menu. Set the shade shading to smooth. And this looks kind of gross, so we need some hard edges. If we go over to the green tab over here again, we can see under the Normals section, we have this Auto Smooth checkbox, so I'm going to turn that on. And usually the default is fine, but you know, anywhere between 30 and 90 degrees usually gets you just fine. Looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go back to my uh, modifier stack, and I'm going to add a bevel. And instead of letting it bevel everything, I'm going to scroll down on the options to here. We've got limit method. I'm going to set that to angle. And just like on the other side, we're going to put that somewhere between 30 and 90 degrees. Oh, let's try right about there. Okay, and then lastly, let's adjust the actual um, offset amount. So if we hold shift, we can um, scroll in much smoother increments here. So I'm going to hold shift and drag until that comes up just nicely to about there. Okay, yeah, that looks good. And 
yeah, that looks good. And then what's really cool about this is if we add one more modifier, the shrink wrap, then we can pick, let's pick this arm, and let's make sure that the shrink wrap happens before the solidify, okay, by moving it up the stack. And there we go. So now if I move this around, <laughs> let's see. Oh, I gotta turn my snapping off. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so we're in object mode, but we can still move that around and it conforms to that shape. Uh, this might work better for you in edit mode, uh, more so than in object mode, but you know you can find a combination there. If you're in edit mode, keep the snapping on. If you're in object mode, keep the snapping off. Yeah, something like that. And then what's cool is we only have one little bit of thickness. So if we wanted like a cool insignia or something here, we could maybe do like a little shape like this, or we could even, we'll do our x-ray mode again. I'm going to control shift B to bevel um, those vertices, kind of chamfer them there. And if we grab the faces, delete the faces, then we can come back into this mode. Yeah, this is a little bit sloppy, but you know, got kind of a weird skull looking thing. Or a ghost, spooky. You know, it's, it's a great tool to just kind of come in and have some fun with. And with relatively minimal effort, we can quickly prototype a cool piece of armor plating, or uh, this is basically the same thing that I did for the helmet thickness up here, uh, or the gas mask looking thing on this guy, or uh, his belt, all of that. And so very quickly, if I just duplicate this, and turn off my snapping, <laughs> uh, duplicate this and kind of move this over. The um, Let me set origin to 3D, uh, no, origin to geometry and kind of rotate this around to fix that. Let's see. Erp. Eep. And, oh, I see, it's because it's too far away, so it's projecting very strangely. So let's get that closer. There we go. Okay, so yeah, we get this awesome real-time, super thick armor plating thingy moving around. And what's really cool about doing it in that kind of procedural way for the thickness is that after we've decided what the shape is, unlike other methods, we can now come in here and adjust the thickness of these to match each other at different thicknesses, even after defining what that shape is. So if we hold Alt, that's kind of our universal uh, multiple object hotkey so hold down alt and we can slide on our thickness here and we can adjust both at the same time which is really great when you want to edit things across um, your entire prototyped model so the next thing i want to show is things like uh, making a tube um, because there's so much fun stuff that you can have with that so the first thing would be to create a bezier curve so shift a and under curves, Bezier curve. And if you're familiar with working in vector art programs like Illustrator, uh, this should be somewhat familiar, except that we're working in 3D. So if we tab in, um, or maybe you've worked with curves before, we have these cool curvy noodly shapes and uh, our hotkeys are very familiar. E to extrude, can pull these around and we can see the direction that it's flowing in. And it's, uh, got full 3D capability, which is pretty cool. And once we've defined the shape of our curve there, we have our first super simple method of turning this into something with thickness, which would be once again over to the object data tab, so the green tab. And we can come down to uh, geometry, and then we should have our uh, bevel and depth. And if we increase the depth, we can increase that noodle. And what's really great is um, that we can worry solely about the shape of the tube and not about does it have any kinks or how am I going to get this bending transition the way that I need it to or anything like that. So, And that's, that's what I really want to highlight with all these tools is how can you think about the shape of your design, not how do I model these particular polygons. Let the tool do the heavy lifting crazy work and you can go all kinds of cool stuff. You could make a pretzel. 
if you want to do something a little more complicated that isn't just a perfectly thick, even tube, uh, we can turn that be uh, the depth of that bevel back down to zero. And we can actually use another modifier. And this is how I did uh, this tube that wraps around this character's neck, as well as the tube that goes over here on his arm. Uh, and it's simple enough to do. I'm going to shift A again, add a mesh, and use a cylinder. And the cylinder, uh, I'm going to, uh, we'll leave it right there. And I'm going to add in an array modifier. And instead of offsetting to the right, which is uh, this default value, I can set that to zero. And we're gonna offset upwards like that. And we'll do something like that. And we could even do, if we tab in here, I'm going to inset this chunk and pull that up a little. Okay, here, let me move that where you can see it. So this is, let me uh, set shading to smooth and just like we did before, auto smooth. Auto smooth is really your friend in prototyping because you don't have to manually mark edges. Back in here, I'm going to adjust this relative offset back down to there. And then we can just increase the count. And now we've got this array of tube thingies. And the great thing is you want to make a small change to one of them and it propagates out to the others. Like that, super cool. And then uh, I'm gonna add in another modifier, this time a curve modifier. And it starts out red because we need a, a, an object to be working from. So we'll use our eyedropper, pick our curve, and we start following the curve. Now the, um, the object position, we can see the little origin dot, is not matching the other object. So we will um, Alt-G to put that back in the center, Alt-R to clear out rotation. And then um, it's behaving strangely because we need to pick the axis that's following the curve. And that's gonna be the Z axis, which is that up and down axis. So when I click Z, we should be getting close. And I think we just need to apply the positions so that this one's uh, center point matches the center point of the other one. So Control-A, location, Control-A, rotation. And we are getting cl super close. It's just a size issue now. So I'm gonna scale this down, something like that. Let me move that down into there. And when we tab back out, there, look at that. All right, so now we're following the curve. And then we have one other awesome feature in our array, which is to change from fit fixed count to fit curve. And we can just choose that curve. And now we match the length of that curve. And that should look familiar. That's exactly how I did uh, this bit up here. And what's cool from there is because it is based on the length of that curve, we can keep extruding and playing with the curve. And I believe we can even, can we adjust the size of this one somewhere on here? Ah, it's, uh, I'm, I know we can adjust the tapering size. Radius, there it is. Yeah, so um, under the item display on the side, radius um, can be adjusted. Um, although I forget the hotkey at the moment, but yeah, we can adjust all of that and do some pretty cool stuff. And just like with anything else, we can stack more more and more modifiers on it. And so that's how I did uh, this tube out here, although obviously a slightly different shape. And yeah, we used it to work smarter. If, if you were working on a team and your team feedback was like, hey, I want that tube to be longer, it's not going to take you hours to do. You just go, whoop, done, boss. And then you can move on. Speaking of moving on, let's talk about how I did this seam in the glove here. This was a pretty cool feature and it wasn't even that hard to set up. So let's tab out of edit mode on the curve, select this guy, focus in on it. And you'll see that it's just this kind of weird end gone chunk thingy. And we don't really care in the prototyping phase. We just wanna see what it looks like. So what I did here is created a plane, kind of brought this up to here. Got that uh, oriented approximately the way that I wanted it in there. And then I ran a Boolean. So we'll add a Boolean modifier, pick the hand, and set the operation from difference to uh, intersect. So now we're only showing up where we intersect the hand. Then I added a solidify modifier increase the thickness a little bit. Then I added a 
displacement modifier. Actually, we set the offset to zero, so it's happening right in the middle there. Then we add a displacement. And we turn that way down, because that's way too much. And boom, we have ourselves a seam. So what's cool about this is that as I go and sculpt more details into the hand, this will continue booleaning and giving me that result no matter what changes I make to the hand. And the seam will always be the same thickness. I don't have to worry about coming back and doing corrective changes to the size of that seam every time that I make those adjustments. Um, add a few more divisions to add the roundness and be able to get over to the thumb, and you've got yourself a lot of saved time and a clean result, which is pretty cool. The last thing I wanted to show on this guy was using repeatable pieces, like these little pylon thingies here. Uh, in case you need to construct additional pylons, you can uh, create a cylinder. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm actually going to delete everything except for uh, one row on here. So I'm actually going to grab both of these Control-F poke faces and just grab this one edge loop here. I'm gonna hit Y to rip it off. Control I to invert the selection, delete vertices, and now I'm just left with this piece here, which is great. And actually, you know what? I don't even need the bottom, so I'm gonna delete that one too and probably bring that up a little. I'm gonna leave it just below where the origin point is right there. And I'm gonna move this over and I'm going to add in a screw modifier, which is right here. And we've got weird shading on it, so make sure we hit Calculate Order. And once again, turn on our Auto Smooth Angles in the Normals. And it's inside out, which is why our shading is still weird. So once again, flip, and there we go. That's a good result. And what we can do from here is start to snap it into place where we want it. So I'm actually going to size it down and we're going to use different snap settings than what we had before. So turn on snap. So we're going to come in here to use face, center, and instead of project individual elements, we're going to use align rotation to target. That's the important one here. And then when I grab this, now we actually snap not only to the model, but we align to it, which is super cool. And that's actually how I did these uh, shoulder bits over here and we can scale that in. There we go. And from here, we can just kind of keep positioning it where we like it. And I'm going to uh, hit Alt-D this time, which makes a linked duplicate. So they're actually sharing uh, object data. We'll make a couple of those like that. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. And we can come in here, tab in, and we've only made this thing out of three vertices, which is so cool because Again, if we have our pivot point on local, we can grab and lock to the, oh, let me turn off snapping, grab, lock to the Z axis and bring this up. And as soon as I uh, tab back out of edit mode, those changes will propagate over to the other objects. Uh, now it's somewhere in there, the calculation order screwed up. So I'm gonna turn off flip again, uh, do that for each of these. We can hold alt again to turn those off. And that looks pretty good. And I, let me try a merge vertices settings there. Okay, and same thing for those, merge vertices. There we go. And we can come in here maybe and maybe add another one of these, kind of come up like that. Yeah, something like that. And we can do all kinds of interesting details with minimal effort and have it propagate out to all of those for quick prototyping. And Alt-D again, we can give him, let me turn back on my snapping. We can move this around here. I could try a mirror modifier again mirror based on a different object, so this time the helmet, and then we can really uh, give him some wacky eyeballs or something. Yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the kind of eyes that he was always meant to have, and who would have known if we didn't have rapid prototyping tools? So that really only scratches the surface of how powerful the modifier stack can be, especially for prototyping kinds of workflows. Hopefully you learned something about snap settings and modifier stack settings and maybe some curves and stuff like that. And I hope that you guys have a good time prototyping some models. Enjoy the rest of World Blender Meetup Day. Bye.